welcome back all of you nana here and then we are into the next day's program on this fusion uh, procurement implementation so let me go there and then share my screen so this time what i did is uh, i have uh, uh, <laughs> No, go there. No, hide. I can't. There's also I know many ways it. So what I did is I will not show you. So let me open up my fusion procurement worksheet. I did everything. This one from the right from the beginning for all the three users. Okay, fine. Everything has been created actually. So everything has been completed up to this now. I will show you up to this. One. Everything has been done. So let me go and then show it to you what I did now. <clears throat> Go there, click on it. So, first of all, I will now show the locations which I created on this map. I click on the setup and maintenance <clears throat> because the instances are going away again and again. So, I don't have any other go. I go, I go to manage find locations. So, manage locations, we go there. I will now go to the manage locations and then query the P01. This time I took a, a prefix of P01 now, find P01 and then enter. So, it has got two locations now. Right? We'll be having a mask location. And then if you keep my custom location, if you click on edit and then click on correct, I have associated the inventory org also. After having created the location, the inventory org, I have done the association also. Right? The child org is associated to the child one, the master is associated to the master. So, this is also done now. If I click on cancel. And then I have created two inventory orgs. I will not show you. <clears throat> so, click on done now. I will not show you two inventory orgs which I have created now. If I click on done. <clears throat> Manage inventory org. So go to the manage inventory or and then I will not go there, show it to you. And again, P01, and then I have done it. The P01, I have done one master and child actually. So these two arms are created. And then I have created one sub inventory on this now, right? Manage percentage fund, sub percentage fund, look up percentage. I go to the manage sub inventory locators and then I created one sub inventory on this. And the P011 is the R, and click on it. And I made one raw material stores. One raw material stores is not created. Then I'll now go on and show you the jobs, you know, find manage jobs. I have now created three jobs. I created three jobs now. Manage jobs. And then if you go and then query my P01 now, find P01. I'm going to make a search now. If I click on search. I will now show you three jobs I have created. I go there. So junior manager, if you go and then edit and then click on correct now. Correct. It is having a what's called a yeah, number of 1001. Right? 1001 is the number. Similarly, for the assistant manager, it will be 1000, whatever is it, two and that 1003. So I got three jobs with the three different levels actually. So click on done now and then go there. I will not choose assistant manager. I will not go to the manager and then show it to you. I go to the edit and then make a performer correction now. Correction is only for viewing actually. It is 1003. So 1001, 1002, and 1003 are the three, uh, what happens to your levels we are given now. Click on cancel. And then I now create the department and then I create the positions also. I click on the now. I now under the positions also. So I go to the manage positions and then show it to you. Manage person. Positions, person, can go there. Manage position is the one. I go to the manage positions and then show it to you the three positions actually. So P01 is the one point. There are three positions are there. So we have three positions, just like what I have created. I have not one, but all the three have been created actually. So make a search now. We're getting all the three positions. <clears throat> so go there. Junior manager, assistant manager, and then mechanical. Junior manager, mechanical, assistant manager, mechanical, manager, mechanical. So all the things are created. So now what I will now go on and show the users actually and manage users. So not here. I will not show you on the security console. So I click on it. I will now go on and show you the users which are created in the manage users form now. I go, I go to the tools now. Go to the tools. You go to the tools and then go to the security console. And then I will now show you all the three users which are created for this. So go to the users. And then I created via manage users, remember. I created via manage users now. Right? So the P01 and then entry now. Manage users and then the P01, EMP1, and then EMP2, and then EMP3. <clears throat> So, so there are three users now actually find three users there. <laughs> so you're right. And then uh, in the first EMP1, what I did is uh, I did all the roles actually. Again, every role. Whatever roles are there in the Excel sheet, fine, I given everything. So this one, we have got a lot of roles now. <clears throat> so those roles I have already given. So these many roles have been given. So the roles are given. For the second and third employee, I've given only the employee uh, employee role. Now. For the second and third employee, we are not going to do only approvals actually. So what happens, we are now given only the employee role, the only role I give for the second level. And then after it, the business unit is now having what? I go there, I will not go to the play. Click on who, and then click on the setup and maintenance. And then here, I have now logged in as a first employee only. Right? If you go to the financials, you go to the financials, and then here, assign busy busy. Assign busy busy. 
So if you go there and then click on it, fine, go there. So as I was with if you go and then select my scope, now fine, drop it down and then select an ad and then click on apply and go to task and then query for my P01, P01 and then click on search and fine, click on search, it will be coming. And then choose it from the left hand side, choose from the left hand side, fine, go there. And then click on save and close, it will be going inside. So here, middle management, procurement, requisitioning and receiving. Requisitioning and receiving is for what? Your uh, purchase requisitions and then procurement for purchase orders. So these have been invited. And then I put this one and then I put a tick mark on the bill in the So everything is done. Now I click on it. And then I have created the item also. Now, let us now try, go and then try to straight away create the requisition. Now I click on the home icon. And then I'm going to get a purchase requisition. So there is the first activity on the procurement. Now I go click on it. Now go there. And then create our purchase requisitions. All the basic setups are now complete now. I click on it. I will now go to the procurement. Now I go to the procurement. And then here I go to the purchase requisitions. So purchase requisitions is not coming. So what you do is you click on plus and then try to add. Now I click on it. So go down now, fine. On the purchasing, we'll now see whether you can add it or not. Me, 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 everything is coming. In the procurement area, it has no. Go down, go down, go down, go down, go down, go down. Go down now. Tools, configuration, and others. Partner management is coming. Where is the procurement? In the procurement, we have to see. Academic tools, academics, cash management, intercompany accounting, general accounting, supply chain planning, receivables, supply chain execution, order management, contract management. And the benefits administration, product management, oh God, it is not visible at all. <laughs> With my client groups, procurement is here. So here, nothing is there actually. Fine. All, is, all are already enabled now. Fine. So nothing extra is not to be enabled. Fine. So it's not there. So what I do is, I will now click on cancel now. So in this case, what happens is the procurement, nothing is available. So go there, click on the, the bottom, click on the show more, and then you will now get what? The shop. This is for purchase requisition creation. So if you click on the shop, what happens? It will now take you to purchase requisition creation actually. Now, it is not throwing your error. What happens? It is not supporting any business functioning at all. Right? It is not complete at all. Right? Business requisitioning is not supported actually. So, what happens if we have to uh, configure the requisitioning business function and then procurement business function? Then only it will be possible for you to enter this page. This page is not coming. So, go there. So, click on OK and then we will now configure the procurement requisitioning business function and then procurement business function. Right? Click on Search. And then we will not do it now. Right? We will not go on and do the task. Two tasks we have to complete now. Right? Click on it. So, click on Search. The first task is what? Configure right, requisitioning business function. So configure requisitioning business function. We had to complete it for our B unit. Fine, drop it down. I will now say it's a P0 and then choose this business unit. Fine, click on OK now. Fine, there's a business unit. I'm choosing it now. Fine, click on it. And then here, the default delivered organization is a master arm. P01. I will now put the master arm. Master. I will not tell you what is the meaning of it a bit later. Now, fine, go there. So this is the only setup we had to make. Now, fine, click on save and close. So the default delivered organization, you went fine, click on save and close. No, no. So complete it. And then go there. Now, what happens? We'll now go there and then do configure procurement business function. Procurement business function. So go to the configure procurement business function. Fine. Click on the hyperlink of it. Now. Click on the configure procurement. Go there, drop it down. And then with the P0 and then enter in. So click on OK. <laughs> now I will now fill up this form. Now fine. Drop it down. The payment terms. I'm not coming getting something. Fine. Go there. Shipping method. I will not choose something. The freight method. This is where you have to discuss the end client and then accordingly do it. Now. FOB is normally destination. No, click on destination. And then the inventory org is a master org. I will not complete it. What, is it, what does it mean by this? Now? P0. And then I will not say the master org. I'm putting it now. Line type, I'm going to put as goods. Now. So goods is the one. I'm not doing it now. Click on the currency is US dollars. Fine. Drop it down. I will not choose US dollars. Something like that. Everything is okay. Fine. Go there. And then here, the maximum file says make it a zero. Fine. Go there. Click on it. This much is sufficient. And then what happens? You give a save. Close. So we have now completed all the setups for uh, creating a requisition. Fine, click on you know, log out and log in. Right? So after doing this, what happens? You have a habit of logging out and logging in. Sign out and sign in. <clears throat> and then go there. So click on sign in. Now we can very well create a requisition actually. We can now land up on the requisition page. I go to the procurement now, fine, click on the procurement. I go there. And then here, what happens? You go to the show more now, fine, click on show more. And then here, what happens? I click on the shop. I click on the shop. I have already created an item also and then assigned to the first star. First child or I will assign. Okay. So now we are now landed up on the page. This page itself was not coming because configure requisitioning business function and then configure procurement business function will not set. So that is why we are not getting this page at all. Now you go to the more task and then click on the update requisition preferences. So click on the update requisition preferences. You're going to go there. Click on. You're now updating the requisition preferences. So this is a business unit. So the delivered location, what happens? I will now say P01, lock one, I'm going to put. So lock one. I'm not putting it off. So it is not an expense alone. Make it with the inventory. And then sub-inventory drop down. We'll have only one sub-inventory and that will be coming in automatically. RMS is 
So the preferences are set. Now we are going to buy for this location. And then the location is identified for the R. So we are indirectly buying only for the R actually. Right. So click on save and close. Now the preferences are set. So we are now completed the setting up the preferences now. Right? Click on save and close. And now what happens? We'll now go on and create a requisition. A requisition is nothing but a representation of a demand. So whenever a mechanical department want a pump or an electrical department on a motor, so they will now go there and then click on it and then they will now enter the requisition line. So the requesting department is now going to create a requisition now. This is known as a purchase requisition or a PR. Now. If I click on the enter requisition lines, go back on it. Now go back on it. We are now going to create a requisition. <clears throat> More the item will work. I don't say P01. If I put P01, and then automatically the item will be coming. Okay. The item will be coming. So once when I put item, everything will be coming. I can go back to it. And then all these things will be coming. The description, the category, the unit submitter, the price, everything will be coming. As soon as I put the item. So the item description, the category name, the what happens, you can see the item description, the category name has come, the unit submitter, the price, everything has come. But it is not having a charge account. So the charge account is the one which will now say, on which account you have to charge whenever you are buying it. Because we are now going to monitor the expenses of purchasing actually. So to monitor it, what about the charge account is a very important account that has been set actually. It is not set. I will not, go I will not, go I will not give a cancel. I will give a done. I will not give a cancel. I will not give it done and then come out of it. I am not saving anything at all. I click on that. On the requisitioning form, I am not doing anything. I will not go there. Right click and then duplicate. And then I am going to set up the charge account. I am going to set up the charge account. So click on the name. The right line, and then click on the setup and maintenance and then come to the FSM area. You come to the FSM area here, you drop down and then go to the manufacturing and supply chain management. So go to the manufacturing and set up manufacturing and supply chain management. Here you go there and then put what? Manage percentage fine, map percentage fine, set percentage. So manage mapping set is the one fine entry. You're going to go there and then choose the cost accounting. Now. Manage mapping set of cost accounting. And click on the hyperlink of it. You're not choosing it now. No, here manage mapping set, one click on select. Right? This is having a scope actually. The manage mapping set is not having a scope. Under the manufacturing and supply chain management, we are querying on manage mapping set. And then the manage mapping set is not having a scope. Fine, click on it. I will not choose cost management. Select an ad and then click on apply and go test. I will not use cost management. Then go down. I will not choose what cost management. I will not choose cost management. Then click on it. And then click on save and close. <clears throat> so click on save. Now what happens? I will now expand it and then I will now go to the material charge account. Material and then entry now fine. That is, the, that is the mapping set which I said now fine. So if you expand it, what happens? It will not be material account organization. So I will now click on the material account organization, then I will now set up the charge account. I click on it, material account organization. So go there. So here, what happens? I'm going to add my COA actually and click on plus and then let me add my COA. So a line will be coming fine. Click on drop down. I will now choose P0. P0, it will automatically take you to my this thing. P01 entry now fine. So select this line and then come down and then here. We are going to say add. You can now see P0A. Mapping is coming. And click on plus one. And then I will now put my org over here. Now find my org is what? P011. And go there. And then the account is what? I will now go there. 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1000. Hmm? Okay. So 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1000. So this is the account which I am now choosing. Now find this is the material charge account. We are now setting it up. Find exactly what it And then give a, what happens? The save and close. So go, there. so go to the top and then give a save and close. And then afterwards, again, come back and then make a check whether you have done it properly or not. Thank you. I will now go on and make a check whether it's not done properly or not. I will now choose my COA. Now. The COA is not visible here immediately. You can go to the query mode, click on the query mode, and then put P01 now. And then enter it. It will not show you this fine. Select it and then see the bottom. It is not chosen. So 1000 is basically an asset account. Thank you. Not done. So go there. Give a cancel now. We will now come back to the shopping area and then again we will now create the requisition. And click on the more task and then click on the enter requisition line and then we are now creating a new requisition. So go there. I will now put what? P01 and then I will now choose the item. Item I am choosing. It. I am choosing the item. And everything is coming. Now you can see the thousand will be coming at the bottom now. The charge account has come. <clears throat> and then it needs one more account called variance account. So let me try to add to the card. So while well, adding to the cart, it will not definitely add. It will not have any problem at all. We can very well add to the cart. You can now see the add cart will be enabled now. I click on it. The add cart will be enabled. And then we are now creating a requisition starting on 1,000 now. And I have given a number of what? Requisition starting on 1,000. And then purchase orders on 2,000. And then purchase agreement on 3,000. So since the numbers are enabled, what happens? It will be coming automatically over here. 
add to cart you know added fine go there so click on it and then click on the hyperlink on the one and then click on the review so click on the review click on the review now we have got only one item at one to one dollar each fine the total amount is one and ten dollars one quantity ten dollars price ten dollars now what happens click on the manage approvals it will not say the variance account is also required if you click on the manage approvals if you click on the manage approvals it will not say the variance account has to be set actually so both the charge and variance account are required for a purchase requisition actually so if the variance account is not set what happens it will not be possible at all you go to the manager approvals and then we have to set up that the variance account so click on the manager the variance account is not set at all this is called invoice price variance so we have to set up this account. Then only what happens, it can go on and then see the approvals. I click on it. You know, go to the place, I will not go there. So I will know what happens, the manage mapping set, you go cancel, no, I click on cancel. <clears throat> cancel. And then yeah, what happens, you go there. I will now query for the invoice price variance account. Invoice, and then make a search, no, I click on search. You know, searching for invoice price variance. So it's called invoice price variance account organization. I click on it. And then we will now again add the chart of accounts for this. No, I click on plus. And then we're going to add the chart of accounts. Go there. So it's what P0 and then enter now and go to select it. And then invoice price variance account. I am not going to put an expense account now. Thank you. Select it. And then click on plus one. I will not put 10 iPhone. What I'm going to go there. Organization is what? P011. And go there. Is that 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone? 1002 is an expense account. I'm putting an expense account. So there's an expense account. Mm -hmm. So go there. Hello. And then click on save and close now. Find the top. Fine. Yeah, so there. So the invoice price variance account is also set. Fine. If you go to the what is called, if you go to the shop purchase requisition, then what happens? You give a save, and then if you go to the manage approvals, now it will not say what. Uh, there, uh, it will not give any error at all. It will not give any error at all. So, Lama, I'm a pipeline. When your class leader can, can I call you after four o'clock? Four o'clock, I'll call you. Okay, four o'clock, I'll call you. So click on the manage approvals and then what happens? It will not throw an error at all. Click on the manage approvals. It will not throw an error. At all. So now what happens? Again saying uh, what happens this one. So you can now see 1001 is the distribution fine. I will know what happens. Go there. I will know what happens. Go to the save and close. 1001 request is already created actually. Go that one. And then I will now click on the hyperlink again. Click on the hyperlink again because it is not sensed actually. No. And go there. Go to actions and bring it to edit mode. In the actions you bring it to edit mode. So bring it to the edit mode and then again click on the manage. Uh, what happens this thing now? I click on it. I uh, now brought to the edit mode now. I click on it. Click on the manage approvals now. I click on the manage approvals. And now what happens? It will not, it will not throw in error actually. Otherwise, you have to log out and log in for the system to sense the change actually. So whenever the system is not changing, you say, what happens? You have to log out and log in. We are going to see, but who is going to approve on it? So it will not go on and see. In the meantime, what happens? You go there. I will not click on done now. I click on that. And then here, what I'm going to, you're going to see the requisition number of something. It's not still working. I'll not go there. I will not click on what you go there. Go to the task now. I click on it. Click on search now. It'll go to the generic area of the task now. I will not go to what manage percentage fine. Rec percentage fine. APP percentage. Manage requisition approvals. I'm going to go there. Manage requisition approvals. I'm going to go there. You go there. Click on it. Now you say application developer means what? It is automatic actually. So somebody has already set up automatic. I will not tell you about how to do it now. I click on it. So here you can see that only there are three stages are there. One is the header pre-approval stage, one is the header stage, and then one is the header post-approval stage. So here what happens, we can use all the three stages also, but on every stage, only one participant has to be used. So on every stage, we had to use only one participant. <clears throat> so now what happens, somebody has already set up on the header consensus parallel. This is enabled actually, you can see. And then I will now click on the edit rules, click on the edit rules. And then here, what happens, go there. And then here, there are so many rules are enabled actually. And then here, what happens? I, what I will do is I will now bypass it. Now click on it. So because what happens? There are so many things. We will be coming to this uh, sort of a thing. What happens? A bit later. Now click on cancel. So I will not disable it. Fine. Click on disable it. And then what I do is I will not check header hierarchy three. Normally nobody uses this. Now fine. Header stage header hierarchy three. Fine. Go there. So click on edit rules. I will not create a rule. Now click on plus. I will not go and create a rule. Now click on it. I will not say auto approval. Auto approval. So I will not select it. Now click on it. Select it. And then click on this. Now click on it. And then what happens? I will not say rule applies. Fine. I will not put not do not put a tick mark here. Fine. Click on OK. I will not say this rule is applicable where the BU is ours. Now fine. Click on add condition. I'm going to add a condition. So click on add condition. This rule is applicable where the BU. Fine. I will not say requisitioning BU or E Q U I. If you write it, what am I becoming? I will not use what requisitioning BU. I will not say P01. So if the requisitioning BU is going to be there, then it will be automatic approval. 
is the condition I have written. So click on add action. Often click on add action. And then go there. And then here, what happens? You go there. It is what, I will not say, it's called automatic approval. I am now choosing it as automatic approval. Fine, click on OK now. Automatic approval. Fine, go there. So if this requisitioning BU is going to be B01 BU, then it is the automatic approval. So the one, fine, click on save and then I am now going to deploy it. So click on deploy. I am going to deploy it. So click on it. So I am now deploying it. We are now getting deployed actually. So the rule is now deployed, and then I will now enable the rule also. I will now enable this rule. Click on. I'm now enabling it. So now what happens is now I will fine. Click on done. And then I will come back here under the purchase requisition fine. I will now go back now. I click on go back. And then what happens? I will now uh, again what happens uh, give a what happens a uh, cancel or something like that. Fine. Click on save and close. And then again query the 1001 requisition now. Fine. Click on it. 1001 requisition. This is an incomplete status fine. Correct. Correct. I'm not going to click again on this one. So go there, go to actions and then bring it to edit mode now. Fine, bring on edit mode. So go there, you know that. If you click on the manage approvals, it will not show you who has to approve it. So click on the manage approvals, it will not show you who has to approve. If it is going to be an application developer, that means what? The person who is creating is only going to approve. It is an automatic approval. The person who is creating is known as the application developer who is now developing this requisition actually. So he is only going to approve it. So this means what? It is an automatic approval. So the application developer is coming fine. This is the person fine. Click on submit by which what happens it gets submitted and then we'll be going for approval actually. It will not go for approval. So requisition was submitted. Fine. Click on. Now what I'm going to do is I will now modify this rule now. Fine. It is now submitted for approval. It is now pending approval. If you click on the hyperlink of it, it will not say with whom it is pending now. Fine. Click on it. I will now click on the 1001. And then on the click on the hyperlink on the pending approval. It will now be automatic now. Fine. Click on that. It now say it takes some time. Then go that on it. I will again click on the hyperlink now. Information is currently available. It is not doing, doing, doing insert. Right. Click on it. I will go there. And then click on the pending approval. It is not, not coming. <clears throat> so click on that. And then after some time, what happens? It will be getting approved actually. No, what happens? No saying not available. Fine, click on back now. No working on it. Now I click on it. No go inside. And then have a look at it. Fine. Click on the pending approval. Have a look at it. Now I click on it. You know, saying not available. <clears throat> so because I want to show so one screen actually. Because of which what happens, I'm not clicking again and again. Now if I click on that. So click on that. And then here what happens? Goes. And the main page also, you click on the pending approval. Now, see that again, no show. now, I'm not going to say that if the requisition is going to be less than $1,000, then EMP2 has to approve. If it is going to be more than $1,000, then the EMP3 has to approve. I click on it. I'm not going to make a modification. Of it. Go to the manager requisition approvals. I'm not going to modify it. Now. I click on it. I'm not going to modify it. Now. The one of no, the header hierarchy three fine. So click on edit rules. I click on edit rules. And then I will now create one more rule now. I click on plus. I'll now create one more rule. Fine. <laughs> Rick total. <coughs> more than 1000. So this rule is for more than 1000. So go there. So take a copy of it and then put it in the description now. Put it in the description. And then click on OK. Now I'm going to write a condition. Fine with the comment. The condition is what? Add a condition. So click on add a condition. I will now say. Requi, if you write requi, if you write it, what happens? I'll be showing you. So I'll now say requisition total amount, right? Requisition amount on the head amount. Right? So, go there. so go there. I will now say what happens? Equals, not equals to, but I will now say more than, right? Uh, greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to 10,000. 10,000, click on OK. I have written now. So if the requisition amount is going to be greater than 1,000, then what happens? Click on add approval, add action. And then here, what happens? It's not an approval group, but what happens? It is approval required. And then not an approval group, but by a single approval. And click on the single approval. So it is not a preparer, but a worker actually. User type is not a preparer. I will not make it as a worker. I click on worker. Here, the worker name is EMP2, comma P01. Now, fine. EMP2, comma space P01, underscore. So that way I write. Last name, comma first name. The first name is P01 underscore and then EMP2. So you write the last name, comma, space, final fine, fine. This is the way you have to write. Worker name is always last name, comma, first name. So if the requisition total is what? Greater than or equal to 1000, EMP2 has to approve. So click on save and then click on dip and then do it. And then I will now make one more rule, fine, for less than 1000. Requisition total, less than 1000. Less than 1000. Requisition total less than thousand. I have not put on the description. And then if you bypass it, then there is no condition at all. 
Always means what? There is no condition. Fine, click on OK now. Fine. Okay. And then here, what I'm going to do is I will not click on plus add a condition. I will not add the BU also. Fine. Or E Q U I. Fine. Repositioning BU also I'm going to add. So repositioning BU is one. Fine. Go on it. I will not say it's a P01 is a one. Fine. That is one condition. So click on OK. And then I have another condition what? Less than one. Fine. Click on. So here, add an operator. Fine. Click on add an operator. As what? I go there. I will not go there. Click on it. As parent. No. Fine. Click on it as, as a parent. No. Fine. As a parent. So as a parent, it will be coming in the top. Right? Then go there. Click on add condition. As a, as a child. So go there. Is what? Repositioning or EQ UI. Repositioning total. I will not say repositioning total. So go there. Repositioning uh, amount header repositioning. I will not say it is less than no. Less than less than so click on okay. Then in this case, what happens? I will not say EMP3 has stopped. So both the conditions are undead actually. So only when both the conditions are valid, then only this rule is applied. Otherwise, the rule will not be applied at all. Click on add action, okay. Click on add action. And then go there. Here, what happens? I will not say approval required by an individual worker now. Fine, go there. It's a single approval and then as a worker actually. Fine, drop it down and then make it as a worker. So go there. Here it is EMP3. Fine. EMP3, comma space. P01 underscore. So this is the way you are trying to. So it is less than 1000 EMP3 has to approve. Fine click on OK now. And then you can have any number of conditions then to make valid. So only when all the conditions, you can even have oring or ending now. Fine. Whichever you feel like you can do it. So you have to think, think and then do it as per the requirement actually. So go there, click on it. And then now remember all the rules will be always be enabled actually. Everything will be enabled. Whatever you are writing it, nothing will be disabled actually. So click on save and then deploy it. Click on deploy it. Save and then click on deploy it. You know, saving it. See, I click on deploy. By which what happens? It will be getting deployed. Only when it is deployed, it will be applicable for us. So click on it. It is not deployed. And then you go to the what happens? Shop requisition. Fine. Go there. Click on shop requisition. And then here, what happens? I will not go there. I will not create a new requisition. Fine. Click on it. Enter requisition line. I am going to create a new requisition. Go there. So it is a P01. The P01 is the one. Fine. Go there. Put the item. And then every item is now ten dollars. I will not go for it. It is seventy quantities. So it is seven hundred quantities. Seven hundred rupees is the total amount. Fine. Which is now less than what happens this thing. Now, fine. Click on add to cart. You know, adding to cart. Now, fine. Click on add to cart. And then go there. So click on this. Now, fine. Click on it. And then click on the hyperlink of it. Click on the review. Now, fine. Click on review. So go there. Now, what happens if you go and then read the manager approvals? So since the total is less than seven hundred, it will not say what happens. The oh, your this thing your what happens your EMP three has to approve. Fine, click on the manager approvals. Fine, click on the manager approvals. You can now see the EMP three has to approve. The next one is automatic. Automatic is also firing, and then the one more rule is out of three rules we have created, two of them will fire actually. The two of them. Second one is the application developer actually. Second one is an application developer. Fine, click on it. So two of the rules are going to fire actually. It will not show EMP3 and then the application developer action. So that way it works. So you can now see that what happens. Now application developer is coming first. So it should come next actually. So uh, we have to bring it down actually. It's not coming. So what you do is you go back. I will not go to the main requisition approval. I will not edit it. Fine, click on edit rules. I will not make the what happens. Your automatic is a lesser priority actually. So B approves and so amount uh, requisitioning B is so and so and so and click on it. This, this is an auto approval bank, click on it and then click on edit now. I'm going to edit it. And then here I will not say what about the lowest priority. So that it will be coming on the bottom actually. So if you make it to the lowest, this will not fire last actually. The auto approval is not firing last bank. Click on save and then click on deploy. Now you can see that that will be coming in the bottom. So we want always automatic approval has to come in the last actually. So make it as the lowest priority. They are all medium priority. Thank you. No, no, no. You go there. You click on it, and then click on save, and then again click on the manage approval. Save. No, save that it has to be EMP3 has to approve, and then afterwards there is an automatic approval only. Go there. Now EMP3 has to approve. Approve. Right. So click on submit. It will be going to EMP3. Now okay, click on submit. It will be going to EMP3 for approval. Actually. So once when you submit for it, it is not pending approval. So if you click on the hyperlink on the pending approval, it will not say it has been marked to EMP3. So click on 1002. You know, see, it has been click on the pending approval. Right? It has been marked to EMP3. So it takes some time now. Fine, click on it. In the meantime, what happens? You'll not log in as EMP3 now. Fine, click on it. You'll not go there. You'll not log in, log in as EMP3 now. Remember, requisitioning is nothing but what happens. You are now you want the management to purchase something for you. So it needs an approval by somebody actually. You can even make it as automatic or somebody has to approve. I will not go there. Click on it. I will not open up on an edge browser. Open up an edge browser. And then there, I will not paste it. 
So Edge browser, we are now going over there if I click on it. And then we are going to log in as what EMP3 now. The P01 domain underscore EMP3. I will not put the password number anymore. And then click on sign in. So P01 EMP3, sorry. P01 underscore EMP3 now. So welcome on the three. So EMP3 is now signing. Go there. Now what happens? You'll now have a bell icon on the top. If you click on the bell icon, you can now see that a notification has come. Action required for approval requisition number 1000. You will now click on it and then have a look at it. You will now look at it. And let's say this is an expensive item. So he may even ask a justification from the requester, but why you need it actually? It may be let's say some huge amount of dollars, let us say. Uh, so what you will do is you will now go to actions and then what happens the request information hmm. request information you will now say why oh, you need it now or something like that so you will now ask me about why you need this costly item now so some information is going to ask route directly back to me right when he replies it will be coming back to you to whom he had to do, he can even choose anybody on the route now. No, he's the person he's ordering fine. He's not requesting it. He can even send it to somebody else. Why well, you need this cost item now? Click on OK. By which what happens? It will not go back to MP1. Click on it. So it will not go back to MP1. So it will not approve nothing like that. Now it will not go there and then have a look at it. Click on it. It will not go to the main screen. Like that. So click on the hyperlink of it and then you can now see. If you click on the pending approval, it will not show that it has come back to him now. So now EMP from EMP3, it has come back to EMP1. Now it has been marked. He is now on blue actually. Right? So after if he has approved it, it will now application developer also will approve and then the system or the update will also happen. Now what you can do is you can click on the camera icon and the information required. Right? Click on the camera icon. You will not click on the camera icon. He's now going to give a reply back, then it will now go back to EMP3. So you will not give it a justification also. Right? Go that you want it. You're not going to give a justification. You want it. Go there. So go to actions and then what happens is now going to what? Submit information. You will not choose the submit information. If I click on submit information. Plant is under shutdown. So we want it immediately. So he is not going to give a justification. Right? Because of which we know this, we need this cost data. Because if somebody is going to spend something for the plant, somebody has to authorize this. What happens? Your expenses basically. If I click on submit. He is now sending it back to what happens the EMP3. He has now submitted information actually. So by which what happens it has now gone back now, right? It's now gone back. So now what happens? We'll now go there and then see it. What happens on this place? If you go on and see then EMP3 has now done it. Go there, click on it. We'll now go there, click on it. So go there, click on it. So EMP3 is again what happens? EMP1 is done now. Click on the now. So if you click on the pending approval, it will now again go back to EMP3. If I click on the pending approval, you can now see that it has now gone to the pending approval actually. So now what happens? It has again gone to EMP1. So from EMP3, it has gone to EMP1. EMP3 has replied and then come back to EMP3. Now. If you click on the hammer, hammer icon, you can now see everybody's response actually. Each and everybody's response will be available here. So, for that. so initially what happens? Uh, he has now asked the question. It has been submitted to EMP1. It has now gone to EMP3 uh, actually. Fine. Plant under. Fine. Why you need this costly P? EMP3 has asked this question to EMP1 actually. And then EMP1 has responded back to EMP3. With so now he has decided to approve. Click on it. I don't go there. So okay. So EMP3 is now desiring to approve. Click on it. Now. Go there, so you will now click on the home icon. Click on the bell icon. And the information submitted by one of the requisition. He has got the information. Fine. Click on it. He is not going to have a look at it. Fine. Whether the information is valid or not. Fine. Click on it. You know, going to have a look. And he has seen everything. Now, fine. Go there. Can't. All this information has come. Fine. He can even click on the camera icon and see all the information. What has come. Fine. It is not only with him. It is not EMP or not. So once when he approves, application developer will approve and then system update will happen. So after doing, after what happens, ensuring that this expense by the company is genuine, then only he is going to approve. Thank you, Kano. So once when he approves it, what happens, the EMP3 is going to approve. So once when it is approved, what happens, we will now go there and then have a look at our, our system. Now I click on that <clears throat> and then go there. So if you go on that, have a look at it again. Now it will be going to approve. If you click on the pending approval, if you click on the wedding approval. Now you can see MP3 has approved it. Fine. A tick mark will be coming. Fine. You can see the MP3 is approved. Application developer has approved. And then the task has also got completed. All the three tick marks are there. So to whomsoever is marked, it will be going in the blue color. And then now everybody has done all the job and task is completed. If you click on done, you can now see that it is approved. 
you can now see that it is approved. So if you click on done and then come back here, in the main area, what happens, you can now see the 1002 is approved. Right? Now, the this thing is gone. The hyperlink is gone. If you click on this, now fine. You can now see the approved. But then do all involved in the approval, you can very well see. Go to the actions and then here, what happens, you go to the view document history. You go to the actions and then go to the view document history. You can now see who are all involved in the approvals actually. And then click on the hyperlink on the submit requisition. He has given a one need, why you need the cost account. Find that account. You can now see everything. And then if you click on the camera icon, find that. You click on the hammer icon. You can now see everybody's uh, what happens. Uh, this thing now. Fine. Oh, their comments. Who are all involved in the total process of approval actually? Everybody's comments can be very well seen. EMP three's comments and then EMP one's comments. Everything has to be on the via the camera icon. So now we have authorized the purchase. Then we have to convert this into a purchase order actually. Now we'll now go there and then we'll now create another requisition for more than 1,000 now. Then in case what happens, the EMP3 has to create. Approve. I click on that. I'll go there. I will now click on what? You go to the more task and then click on the enter requisition lines. And then this time what happens? I'm now going to create our requisition for more than 1,000. P01. I'll go there. So click on the first item. I will now go for what? 10 quantities. But I will now say 150 quantities. 150 quantities is more than 1,000 actually. If I click on add to cart. Now EMP2 has to approve. So click on the hyperlink of it or click on the review. Yeah, no way to review it now. And then go to the manage approvals and then see that EMP2 has to approve. No, EMP3, EMP2 has to approve. So EMP2 has to approve now. I click on it and I'm going to submit it. It will now go to EMP2 for approval actually. So the EMP2 can even add ad hoc approval. He feels that he is not competent enough to justify whether this expense is uh, worthwhile for the management or not. EMP2. So he is now going to add a doc approval for EMP3 actually. Now click on submit. So 1003 is the requisition. It is now submitted for EMP2 now. I click on submit. So let us now log in as EMP2. It is now done for this. So we'll now go, go to the what's called your Edge browser. Right? Go there. Sign out and then sign in as EMP2 now. Right? Click on it. We'll now go there. Sign out and sign in as EMP2. So click on it. So click on confirm and then we are now signing as EMP2. EMP2, we are now signing in. So click on sign in now and EMP2, we are signing in. So you'll look at a bell icon there. So go there, go it. And then if you click on the bell icon, it does not come to your point. So here, what else? It is set to come now. And 12, 12 listings are there. The 13th has to come. I click on it. It takes some time actually. Not to, I will not dismiss two hours ago, two hours ago. Fine, dismiss, dismiss, dismiss. dismiss. I keep on dismissing it. All the two hours. So click on it. And then again, what I click on it, we'll now see that what I was again two hours before is only two hours. No, even all the things of it. Dismiss, dismiss, dismiss. Dismiss, dismiss. So click on it. Now, click on it. 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 Click on so click on confirm and then we are now signing in EMP2. So now what happens? The notification is gone. We have to wait for it. If this is not available on the bell icon, what you do is you click on it on the left hand side. What happens? You go to the, go to the tools and then you go to the approvals. Tools approvals, you can very well go. I click on the tools approvals. Here, what happens? You can even see. This is also going. This is another way of seeing the approvals. Tools approvals or work list. It will be sometimes called as a work list and then sometimes it will be called as approval. Now I click on it. So go there. Now approved requisition has come here. That is not coming there, but it is not coming here. So here it will definitely be coming. In the bell icon, see bell icon is also coming. Right, click on it. Bell icon is also coming. So this is also coming. So it takes some time everywhere. Right, click on it. And then click on the upload. Now he feels that what happens is he is unable to justify whether uh, this item can be really required for the present shutdown or not. So he will now add a ad hoc approval. Right, go, there. go to the actions. And then go there. So here what happens is he will now reassign it to somebody. You know, go to go there. You will now reassign it. Right, click on reassign it. And go there. You will now say user is what? I will now say P01 underscore EMP3 now. You know what we User means what? P01. Employee word, last name, comma, first name. Fine. Please examine this urgent requirement. So he's asking because he is not aware of it. You know, asking it now. What happened? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, requisition. What are the actions? And then here, what happens? The uh, reassign. Now, if I click on the reassign, and I'll say P01 underscore EMP3 now. So I'm not sure the EMP3 pin, but no more. And I'll say, please examine this urgent requirement. 
you know, writing it, and then click on the reassign at the bottom. Now, this request will be reassigned to MP3 for what happens, additional justification because he's not very sure about it, whether we can spend this much of a money or not. And go on. So if you go there and then click on the main one, right? no, click on the hyperlink of it now, click on the hyperlink, and then here you can now see from here EMP2, what happens, it has now got the EMP3 actually. Go there, go there. So EMP3 is now gone. So if you click on the header icon, find EMP2 is not there because now it has gone to EMP3 actually. And click on it, and then here, what does it go there? <clears throat> You'll now have a look at it. Okay, go on. So, go on. so you can now see the message now. Please examine this object. So EMP2 has now marked EMP3. So EMP2 is no more in the picture at all because the notification is lying with him now. So the notification with whom he is lying is not showing you. And then now go on to EMP2 because it's not more than 1000. So it has now gone there. And then from there it has now gone. Reassigned to somebody for examination. He has not seen it. Fine, go there. You'll now go to the actions. And then he says that, okay, he can even, whatever, escalate it. All these actions he can very well do. All this so, well, you know, come back and click on that. Now, what happens? We'll again go back to this login. Now, we'll now log login as what EMP2. So, from EMP3 or EMP2, what happens? You go there, click on sign out. I will now go to the EMP3 location because he has now reassigned it to EMP3. So, EMP3 is the one kind of thing. So, P01 EMP3, click on sign in. So, go there, click on it. And then here, what happens? You go there, so click on the bell icon. And then here, approve requisition has come to him. Thank you. And then you will also look at the what happens, the camera icon, and then see all the comments, whatever has come on this. Thank you. So all the comments he has not seen. Now all coming. Thank you. So it has not come to him now, basically. How it has traveled, he will now click on the bell icon and then see. No. So after seeing all the comments, whatever, you will not take a decision, basically. So, okay, fine. I will now approve it. Thank you. He will now go to approve. Thank you. Approve. By which, what happens, 1003 is now getting approved by EMP3. Remember, requisitioning is a real, very complex one because the management has to get a justification from the top bosses. The top bosses has to approve or reject and then do it. Now, now what happens if we get done now? Fine, click on it. Now, what happens? It will be going to what? Approve. One, two, three is approved. Fine. There will not be any hyperlink. When you go there, click on it. And then here, now, what happens? You go there. You go to actions and then go to view document history. It will not say everything about it. And click on the submit requisition. Fine, click on it. And then go there. And then nobody has given a comment, actually. One, one, one guy has given a comment. One day has given a comment actually. The comment can be seen via bell icon. EMP2 has given a comment actually. Mm -hmm. You cannot see the comment on the bell icon. So the comment has moved. Please examine this agenda comment. Has been given by him to EMP3 actually. So this is on this note. So this is now completed. <laughs> now the next activity is what we have to go on that. This is a second now, right? So automatic approval is now done. The worker level approval is done. Next is what? Approval by approval group actually. Next is what? Approval by approval group. I click on that now. I will go there. I will not. What happens? They go there. Manage approval groups. I will go there. We are going to go approval group. No, fine. Manage percentage. Fine. APP percentage. Fine. GROUP percentage. Manage by approval group. You go to the manage approval groups. Right. And then here, what happens? We are going to do it now. I click on it. I will not create an approval group. I click on this. And then let me get an approval group. I will not say it is a P01. Right. APP underscore GROUP. Fine. Underscore 1. I am creating it. So click on save by which whatever the approval gets created. And then we can have the list of approvers on the approval group. Approval group is nothing but a collection of approvers actually. So click on plus, and then I will now put the approval group now. So here I will now put the username and not the employee name. Now. P01 underscore EMP2 is the username. Now. So click on OK by which whatever the user gets added. And then again, whatever the click on plus, and then I will now say next is what EMP3. Now. The P01 underscore EMP3. Here I am now putting a username and not the employee name, remember. So we added two of the employees as the approval group. Click on now I'm not going to modify this. Topic. No, no, no. <clears throat> so go there. I will not go to what? I will not go to this place. Go there. So I will not go to the manage requisition approval. Manage percentage. Fine. Rec percentage. Fine. APP percentage. So go to the manage requisition approvals. Fine. Go there. Click on it. Mm -hmm. Here, what I do is. I will not go to this place. Click on it. I will not choose mine, which is enabled now. Click on it. I will not click on edit tools. So now, what happens? Uh, requisition total more than. I will not go there. I will not edit. No, click on it. This I am going to edit now. So click on this now. As what is now? I will not give what is it? edit is okay. I click on okay now. Click on okay. Uh, not this one. Not I will not click on edit now. Click on it. Requisition total more than this now. Click on edit. You want edit now? Come here. I will not click on it, not the edit actually. 
it goes like in the bottom what happens uh, greater than and equal to fine goes like, no you need to i will not say in between no between fine between i'll not go there thousand to two thousand so if it is going to be between 1000 and 2000, then what happens? It has to go to EMP2. Right? So click on it and then click on save. And then I will now create one more thing. Now fine, click on it. So click on plus now. I will now say my approval by approval group. So approve by approval group. I'm going to do it. Fine, click on it. I will now take a copy of it. Fine, click on the description. Paste it. And then go there. So click on OK. Now this one, approval by approval group. Fine. Is approved by approved group is approved group point that. So click on it. I will not add a condition. I will not say requisitioning total or E Q U Y requisition. So go there. Requisition I want. Fine. I will not say what happens are more than no. There it do I use between now what happens? I will not say more than. Greater than let us say three thousand. So this rule will be applicable only when it is more than three thousand actually. Then click on OK and go there. And then click on add action of it. Click on add action. You know, adding an action of it. Approval required by approval group. Now, previously not single approval. Now it is the approval group. Now, that. Approval group is what? T01. And then what happens? I give it a habit. It will be So, approval will be recommended by approval group. I click on OK. So, this is now done now. So, if it is between more than 3000, it will be there. And then if it is going to be 1000 and 2000, then what happens? EAP2. And then less than 1000 is EAP3. And then every rule will be enabled actually. And then auto approval will always be lower. So, I click on save now. And then click on deploy. So, we are going to deploy it. And then we are going to see, check it now. Fine. We are going to send it to anybody. Fine. We are going to check it up. Whether it is not coming properly or not, when I create a new requisition, so click on again. Okay, if I click on this purchase requisition, it goes there. I, go there. I will not click on done, and then I will not create a new requisition. Click on that. And then here, what I click on done, and then come out of it. I will not make a new requisition. Okay, click on it. And then click on done. And then come out of it. Click on the more task, and then click on the enter requisition lines. I will not go there, and then put my item point P zero one. I am not putting an item. I click on it. And then there is only one quantity. Fine, go there. So click on add to cart. It will not get added. So go there. So click on the hyperlink on the cart. Now, fine, click on the hyperlink on the cart. And then click on the review. I click on the review. So go there. Now, if you click on the approvals, it is now less than 1000. And so what happens? You will now have EMP3 coming into picture. EMP3 will be coming into picture. EMP3 has stopped. I will not see EMP3 has stopped because it is now less than 1000 dollars. Well, not fine. The EMP3 coming up. If it is going to be more than 1000 and then between less than 2000, then what happens? EMP2 will be the approval right? because it is in between. For an in between of 1000 and 2000, we are given EMP2 as approval right. So the EMP3 is coming. So give a cancel now, go back, and then I will not make the requisition total be between 1000 and 2000. So I will not go for 150 quantities. 150 quantities I'm going to go for. So go there. So click on save. And then click on the manager approvals. Now EMP2 will be approved. You know, we think this. So I can see EMP2 is approved. But if it is more than 2000, if it is more than 2000, then what happens? Approval group has to approve. So I will now say 201. You know, more than 2000 actually. So click on save now. And then if you click on the manager approvals, the approval group has to approve. It has got two employees. We have got two employees. <clears throat> So once when the first employee approves, it will now go to the second employee. And then once when the second employee also approves, it will be going to the third employee. It will get approved. It will be two employees. So this is on the approval group. So application developer is only coming. It is not coming. The, third, the approval group is not sensed at all. We will now go and then have a look at it. Click on the manager. So click on the edit approval. Now see why it is not since no. Uh, I now say more than no. Auto approval point total. Now see. Uh, the thousand of amount of this is the one. This is not firing actually. You have to go on and see the fact you can go there. See. So a requisitioning amount greater than three thousand. Oh, again three thousand actually. I had to give three thousand. So I now say three not one. I made a mistake actually. Three three not one. Go there. And then click on say no. So click on the manage approvals now. You can see that what happens. It will be what you want. Go there, click on it. It's not coming out. It will not show us. Now what happens? The approval group will now come into picture and then both the employees have to approve one after the other actually. So we have to write the rules very properly with appropriate amount now fine, based upon the end client's discussion. So very big one. 
So here, you're right. The UMC is that what happens? Both the employees are coming here. It's, they are the part of the approval group set. So writing the conditions and then the rules are really very good. And whatever rules you are writing, everything will be enabled. And then everything will be enabled for certain conditions only. So you have to write the conditions very properly. Then only it will be proper. Otherwise, what happens? Is you may even have hundreds of rules in one uh, one area of and the hierarchy itself. Whatever you may have even hundreds of rules, but you should not see that nothing is conflicting with each other actually. Nothing should conflict with each other. So this is on the approval uh, group now. And then we'll have one more thing on this, but there is no time at all because we'll not whatever five three minutes. So give a cancel now, fine. So we'll not see the next topic tomorrow. On the approvals, what happens? We'll not see the next topic tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. bye.